All right, so we're going to talk about the Baltimore Ravens. Um, not a great year for them, eight and nine. <clears throat> um, Lamar Jackson struggled with injury. That was probably the most notable thing about the season, really, is kind of why they struggled after, you know, a couple of good years. Um, the notable ads this year, the most notable ad, in my opinion, was getting Kyle Hamilton in the draft. Um, there were points in time when people thought that he would be, you know, a top two, three, four pick, five pick maybe. That he ends up falling to them late in the first, so that's a good addition to their secondary. <clears throat> but the team did lose quite a few players this year to the offseason. They lost Hollywood Brown, who went out to Arizona, and they lost Sammy Watkins, who went to the Green Bay Packers. Not that he made much of a difference, but he's still gone. And then they lost to Sean Elliott. Um, I forget where he went. Maybe it was Jacksonville. I need to double-check that. But as far as the coaching staff, it's still Jim Harbaugh um, – or John Harbaugh, sorry – and um, the, the the offensive coordinator is still Greg Roman. So it's it's not a lot of change for this team. I don't really know how I feel about that overall. I mean, not the formula wasn't working, but last year, you know, Lamar Jackson struggled with injury, et cetera. But right now, Lamar Jackson's ADP on underdog is quarterback four. I have him as my quarterback five. I'm not really willing to pay up for him right now just because there's kind of other guys after that. Um, he's in my tier two two as well i believe let me double check my rankings here no he's actually still in my tier one i probably need to shorten that up a little bit so um it was it was a weird year for him but i think this next year he's gonna have a chance to make it up running back wise last year was awful for them it was Devonta freeman both their running backs jk dobbins and gus edwards suffered injuries to start the year in in camp so they brought in latavius murray they brought in Devonta freeman a couple of old fellas that if you've been playing fantasy football for a while, like you definitely know their names, um, but you don't probably remember them from last year. So um, right now, I'm not really interested in Dobbins or Edwards. I'm interested in what you guys' uh, take on that is. But probably the most interesting thing about this team is the pass catchers to me. It's Rashad Bateman um, and it's Mark Andrews that seem to be the primary kind of top end guys. Um, I'm known to be a little bit down on Bateman compared to a lot of people. Now that was kind of before Hollywood departed. So I do think he has a chance to get a lot of targets, but I'm curious, you know, at this point, before we jump into the defense, what are your guys's kind of takes on this, this group of offensive, these are the primary offensive players for this fantasy team. Well, I'll start first because I have been defending my Bateman take on YouTube already I will say, I okay, first of all, we all obviously know we made the mistake. He went in the first round. He was not a second or third round wide receiver, as we said in the I didn't make that episode. mistake, to be fair. Okay, Billy fair enough, but you also mistake. didn't correct it. So by sure. by you know, by association, you're guilty of that. Yeah. And uh also, yes, the running backs are not going to out target Rashad Bateman. I'm not that's not what not my point. That was not my point then. It's not my point now. I get that that's how what I, I said that the tight ends are going to be featured first, then the running backs, then the wide receiver. It's not necessarily how what I meant. I meant that like in that offense, the tight ends are going to get pass catching down work first. Then the running backs are going to run the ball. That's what I meant. Like they're going to get the, the next batch of carries touches in that offense. And then after all that, then the wide receivers will get some love. And that rec- includes Rashad Bateman and the bunch of others that they have filling out that roster on as a wide receiver. I think another thing that they were upset about was the fact that I, or maybe they misconstrued was the Lamar Jackson take where you say he's the running back, you know, or whatever, uh, or no, maybe I made that point, but I don't feel great about JK Dobbins. I like his ADP. I will say um, in that like fifth round, that's the only upside to me. I mean, I think you're, you could still get a better running back. I mean, Brees Hall's shortly behind him. If you believe in that kind of stuff and Miles Sanders, if you're me, so personally, I think that that could be an option. I just, I'm not excited about a guy who did good his rookie year and then got injured and came back to honestly a crowded backfield. So that's my biggest thing. But Bateman, on the other hand, we've already rambled about last week and I will continue to ramble about uh, is poised for a stellar year. I mean, obviously he still has to do it. So, I mean, there's that, but big fan. Yeah, Joe. I like I like J.K. Dobbins uh, to an extent. I've been kind of pumping the brakes on him uh, quite a bit. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot more of a rotation like we did last year. I think Baltimore kind of saw that that was a good strategy. 
plus seeing two of your star running backs go down in preseason um, has to open your eyes a little bit to using the depth that you do have. So, I mean, a sneaky guy for me uh, has been Tyler Batty. I think, you know, if you're in a deep league, he could catch a lot of passes this year. You know, Mike Davis is going to rotate in. He's a solid veteran. And then we'll see what happens to Gus. He could even be a cut in camp um, with everything that they have there. So uh, I like, I like J.K. Dobbins only if you see Gus go down and Josh fifth round's a little bit rich for me, but I can see why people would take him. But I absolutely love Rashad Bateman. Um, I like we said last week, he's going to be in a lot of my teams um, just because of where he's going right now. I think you know we're seeing him go eighth, ninth round. That'll probably creep up a little bit as people get into it more. But I like this offense. I think you're going to see a little bit of Isaiah Likely sneak in too, just off of his pure talent. Um, but uh, I don't know. I think, you know, if you're really banking on something out of this offense, you're going Mark Andrews, you're going Lamar Jackson. That's about it. Yeah. Agreed. I think, but I feel like where you're getting Bateman isn't bad either. I mean, you Yeah, are... I just checked his ADP. It's wide receiver 28. But the thing is, like, that's his ADP, but he's really – He's going to creep like his up. Value, at least his value seems like it's – that doesn't seem like an accurate reflection of kind of how I feel like people feel about him. Maybe I'm wrong – um but i don't know it's also june right now so yeah you're gonna see him creep up as soon as people start getting into it i will say the sleeper on this wide receiver core in my opinion is devin duvernay um he had a couple of big plays last year uh you know in the return game he had a couple end arounds he looked explosive i mean i don't think that if, if anybody's gonna step up to be that second or third guy yeah i think he is kind of uh, he's a sleeper for you, so that's that's where I'll leave that. Um, okay, let's jump into the defense. Now, this is kind of where my world is a little bit more, but the, the, the main guy on this team last year was Patrick Queen. Only 98 combined tackles, not good. I was looking at his production profile in the index. 0.25 points per snap. I mean, that's not a bad per snap thing, but he only played 826 snaps in 17 games. So they don't trust Patrick Queen still to be a three-down linebacker after two years and taking him in the first round. So that's a red flag. You know what I mean? Uh, Chuck Clark, people are a little bit not sure if he's going to be able to get on the field with um, Hamilton being there. I think Chuck Clark is – I think he'll find a way to get onto the field personally. Um, Other than that, you had the rookie last year, Adafe away. Not a bad rookie season. Five sacks, 33 combined tackles. Um, I, I think his snaps are definitely going to go up. He only started two games last year, so there's definitely room for that to go up. Uh, so, yeah, I think there's some guys there. You know, there are other, the other defensive backs. Marlon Humphreys, we all know he's really good. Uh, Malik Harrison played a little bit last year, didn't get a lot done. I saw they had they, – they, they attacked the linebacker position a little bit in the, un, like the free agency market, the undrafted guys. I saw one at least one guy that – I forget what article I wrote, saw it on, but there was some hype around it. So they're not happy with their linebacker position. So my 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 thoughts on this defense are just a word of caution. If you're going to count on one of these linebackers, I would say maybe don't. I would be definitely skewing towards getting these defensive backs. Um, and you're not going to have to take them as a DB1, but there's a couple of guys on this team that have DB1 in their range of outcome. Um, and then I would say I think you can start banking on away to make some noise off the edge this year in a bigger way um, as he has earned his way onto the field. And he had a pretty good season last year. So interested in your guys' takes on that situation and that that team. He's got to get his away onto the field. Oh, my God. I I like what I saw Ah. out of him last year, man. Um, Patrick Queen, you could probably sell him for a decent price right now um, and get something You think so? I feel like people are off of him right now. People love the name. People, people absolutely love the people name. People do love, love the name. No, I, I will. I, mean, I will. You're not lying there. Yeah. I mean, it's it's one of those things. But, you know, the, the OA <laughs> thing is interesting to me because they tried. Didn't they try to get Zedaria Smith in there and then he backed out the last second? Yeah, they did. They did. So I could see them adding someone after roster cuts just to muddy the water even more. They like doing the, um, you know, Justin Houston. They liked rotating those guys in last year. So, as long as Elway can continue to do that, that's that's awesome. Um, I like getting him on the field there. I will say I am a huge fan of this Baltimore Ravens secondary. Um, it is just stacked with depth, which is phenomenal. I will say it does make it a little tricky for fantasy purposes, but if I had to grab one, 
Obviously, Kyle Hamilton's going to go probably a little too high in redraft. Um, if you got him in Dynasty, I get why you got him. He's also going a little high, in my opinion, there. Um, but Marcus Williams and Chuck Clark could both be interesting late snags. Um, but Marlon Humphrey is one of the guys that I swear every year nobody thinks about because he's a cornerback technically. But, man, just makes plays and gets about four or five tackles as a corner in a game. So look out for him because he's pretty cheap because people see corner and they don't draft him or they draft the corners who don't actually make any plays other than, you know, good coverage. So he had a down year last year too. So he is a good guy to target who has like legitimate CB top three CB upside. Who's not going to have to cost you that probably this year. Yeah. I I do want to, I want to circle back to offense real quick, Billy, before we get your defensive takes, I feel like I'm, didn't talk about Mark Andrews enough. He's my dynasty tight end one, I think, still. Um, he was my dynasty tight end two last year, I know, behind Travis Kelsey. I know a lot of people wanted to still want to make George Kittle and Kyle Pitts over Mark Andrews. They're trying certain people, but I'm still not there. We have several seasons, and this is at the position where nothing is consistent except Travis Kelsey. But right now we have what is it, Billy? You tell me. Is it three top five seasons, top six seasons out of Mark Andrews? I mean, it's He's basic. Probably three. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's basically unheard of except for Travis Kelsey, and it's just kind of being overlooked because the hype around George Kittle was so hard when it was there, and the hype around Kyle Pitts was so hard. And it's like Mark Andrews is doing something right now that is. I, I know his ADP and stuff is is high, but it it's it's almost comical when you look at it in dynasty in situations sometimes that people value Kelsey over him still. I mean, like Mark Andrews has got five, six, seven years of green grass in front of him. And Kelsey's got two, three, like max, you know what I mean? So it's just, I just wanted to bring that up. If you want to get ahead of the curve, Mark Andrews, we might be talking about, I'm already talking about him like this, but in two or three years, we might be talking about him like we've been talking about Travis Kelsey because he's already got some good ones under his belt and it's going unappreciated for flavor of the week tight ends. You know what I mean? So anyway, sorry, Bill. I, I wanted to get back to that. I wrote that on my notes that I wanted to highlight that and I kind of glossed over it. So whoever's talking bad about Mark Andrews. They can, well, it's not know, that people talk are talking it. bad. It's that it's like, well, Kyle Pitts is just more athletic and George <laughs> Kittle is just in the Kyle Shanahan system. And it's real good. I really and like that like, voice, Jordan. Oh, fucker, shut up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I've, I've met that person on Twitter before. but Yeah, there's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot. Um, anyway, just uh, the only thing I had on defense was watch out for David Ojabo. I, I, he's injured. He's going to come back. He's going to be great when he comes back. I just – Wanted to restate that he should not be slept on. I get that his injury is really scary for a player. With, I think is an Achilles. Um, not something that you want to have, especially when you need a good first step like he does. I get it. But at the same time, if he comes back, I would say even 90% of what he was, I think he could potentially take that job over um, Owe. So he, if only – because also another thing is um, – the new Baltimore defensive coordinator is the guy from Michigan. Guess where David Ojabo went to college, Michigan. So was Michigan, the, yeah. So the defensive coordinator is uh, familiar with him. So I think that that could, and not this year, maybe, but maybe <clears> next year. It's just somebody that maybe, if you need to float, want to float an offer out there for somebody who took him because he may not play well this season or might not even play the season at all. It's just somebody to keep in mind. Yeah, and just a note on Ajabo in the two rookie drafts that we did, I think he went <laughs> mid second in one and you know, mm-hmm. early first in the other. So his name value is still getting him drafted by people. Which is crazy, by the way. I yeah. thought that for sure would knock him out, but Oh, know. I did too. But if you let him nope. rot on their taxi squad or mm-hmm. their bench for, you know, five or six games, then slide in with an offer, I think that's a hell of a just make a note for, you know, October. To, uh, to kind of look I'm at telling that. you, just when you're like, man, what can I do with my roster to improve next year? Just David Ojabo is one of those guys for 2023 that you may strike gold if you snag Do you think him. he'll do? You think he could be a breakout player this year? I would need to see how healthy he is by training camp. I don't, I don't think he's going to play very much this season, but if he gets in at the back half of the year, maybe we see him um, get in some snaps. I would His be interested to see how April, he recovers. Isn't it? 
Yes, it was right before was the draft. Born Achilles, so yeah. He probably, I mean, yeah, that's tough. Uh, it, it would be late in the season, mind you. Yeah, you're late, right. You're right. But you're right. I would still good like stash. to see how his recovery is coming along. Good stash. Good stash. All right, twenty minutes on that first team. Um, IDP Army, awesome possums. Drop us some comments and some uh, some love or hate on Twitter. How you feel about how we covered the Baltimore Ravens? And yeah, but we still need to go through the schedule. So, Joe. Spout us a Baltimore Ravens schedule. What's the over under on them? The over under on the Baltimore Ravens is nine and a half games. Okay. So we're going to start off with the New York Jets and week two, Miami Dolphins, Probably New England Patriots. Win. Probably a win. Buffalo. Probably. That's a loss. loss. Cincinnati. Probably a we loss. Got New York Giants, Cleveland Browns, Tampa Bay Bucks, the Saints. Panthers, Jags, Broncos, Oops. Steelers, Cleveland, Atlanta, Steelers, and Cincy to round it out. What? When's our first game against Cleveland? I felt nine games in there. Seven. I'm because. taking the under. I will take first the under game. based on if they were to play Cleveland in those first four to six games, they're easily missing out on Watson because I think he's going to get suspended. Um, but... Yeah, that's tough. They have some. Well, really I mean, even if he game. came back week seven, I don't think they're gonna, you know, first week back after not playing since 2019. I just that would be shocking for him to come in and just light it up. He could do it. It's awesome. just, it would be it'd be shocking. But I don't know this one. This one. I mean, Vegas obviously, you know, they make their money off stuff like this. Very close. I mean, I counted nine in there for sure. Uh, it's that tenth win in there that it's going to have to get a little fluky. That they may maybe a game that they wouldn't have I normally won is what they're going to have to do. But that's a good line. It is a good line. So Jordan, you're under. Josh, you seemed under. I'm going to go with under just because that receiving core scares me a little bit. And you said nine and a half on huh? nine, nine and a half. Yeah. Wow. What you think? Wow. I'm going to go I, over just because they have <laughs> Justin Tucker. So you know he's going to hit. He's oh, going to get at he's least He's going to break his own damn record. All right. Well, I'm going to go over as well just because, in my opinion, they only need one fluky win in there to go over. And if they don't lose to the Bengals twice, I would say that's one of those two wins. So We also didn't talk about Justin Tucker enough because uh, he's the best kicker in the league. And that's all I have.